So all you need for this painting today are your primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. And you can add sap green and burnt umber and black and white. Now, if you don't have sap green or burnt umber, you can use whatever you have on hand. And same with your primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. So they can be cad red, cad yellow, and ultramarine blue. They're the, they're the most popular ones, but whatever you have on hand, I'm sure we can work with it. And then we have a flat synthetic brush, chiseled edge, and I have a flat um, a filbert brush, which is a chiseled edge and synthetic. And I also have a liner brush, and a long one and a short one. You need a couple of different brushes just in case some don't work out for you. So it's nice to have a few extra brushes around. And that's about it for the brushes. When we come up with something else, I'll guide you along. Okay. So this is a nice stretch canvas. See how it's stretched over some wood? You buy these pre-primed. All right. That's a size 11 by 14. So what I did was I just taped off my horizon. I finally get a really nice straight line and then we can work on one section at a time. I came down a little under halfway. And today we are going to be using our magic white. Our magic white. This is a, a beautiful mixture. I, I did a video on how to make your own magic white or liquid white, whatever you want to call it. and. So we're going to take our magic white. This is going to extend the blending time because as you could see there's a lot of blending in this painting. So we're just going to take flat or filbert, it doesn't matter, and we're going to put on magic white. Here we go. So I'm putting on enough magic white, as you can see, so that I can keep my background nice and wet. So I want to make sure the drying time is going to last because we have a lot of blending. This I did this painting on purpose because I wanted to show you how this beautiful magic white helps you blend your paints beautifully, smoothly. You don't have to worry about it drying up on you. So I'm putting on a fair bit because I don't want to, you know, like I want to, you can put on a thin coat if you want to. I'm just putting on, I mean if you use gesso, gesso is, is good, but gesso will not extend the drying time for you. It only just makes your canvas smoother so the paint will stick to your canvas better. But you can also make magic white with gesso or white paint. So I'll leave the link below to how to make this. All right. Now that's plenty. Let's uh Let's now start painting the background sky. I'm just using my flat brush. And this is synthetic, it's not Bristol. Before I, before I decided to use the Magic White, I used to use a Bristol brush to make the paint move faster so it could catch it before it uh, dried up on me. So I'm just going to put some colors into the sky. I think I'm going to lay on a little bit of burnt sienna up here in the corner. Look how that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blend. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, you, when you do, when you do this, you're going to. You, I don't know if you'll be able to paint without it anymore. It's just amazing. All right. So we'll just put that on. So beautiful. If you were doing this on a plain canvas, you'd be struggling to get the paint on, or you'd have to use a ton of paint on your brush. So just get a bit of blue for your blue sky. Get a bit of blue. And there we go. 
So you can put on a bit of a dark blue because it won't matter because you have magic white on there. So the magic white will actually lighten up your blue for you. Just watch. So put some blue on. See that? Beautiful. But if that's not light enough for you, you can always add white. But look how that's blending in with that darker color that I made without destroying it too, you know? They, they just blend perfectly together. I'm going to add a little white because I want to brighten up a bit more. Beautiful. You'll be very happy with this. Okay, so that's some blue. We'll go back to some of our burnt sienna. Let's pick up some burnt sienna. I don't have a big lot on because before I used to put a lot on my brush because I couldn't get it to spread. But now I don't need a big lot. See how easily it's spreading? Look at that. Beautiful. Now, I'm going right up into my blue. Look, and it's not even destroying my blue. It's just having it all blend together so pretty. Look at that. I might even go up into another color. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah. Nice. Just back and forth, long strokes. Beautiful. I'm going to make kind of an orangey color for here. Like I'm just going to put a little bit of red together right here. Some red and some yellow and red mixed together. A little bit of white. Brighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to get that nice orangey color. And I'm going to put it underneath that one just to brighten it up a little bit. And I'm, I am making it on a curve. And I'm just going to blend it right up into those other colors. See, look how beautiful it blends. Unbelievable. Beautiful. And as I come down here, I'm going to start lightening it up with yellow. So that's pretty as it is now. You can also take your fluffy brush. I call it my fluffy brush. And I'm just going to over some of this just to blend those colors again I just want to do I'm experimenting actually <laughs> I love to experiment to see what happens okay there's no need to do this so you don't have to worry about it no need to do that right now because because of the, the magic white you don't need to do that now so my next color is going to be coming down I'm going to go really bright I'm going to go into my white and my yellow but I want it more white than yellow but but yellow tint okay so there it is and here we go see how nice and bright that is but it's nice and yellow but it's still really light and I don't have to worry about the blending it just blends beautifully it does all the work for you you don't have to struggle anymore no more struggling. Struggling is all over. This is magic. Gorgeous. I'm going to add a little of my orangey color onto my brush. Just I just scrubbed into my little orangey color just to give it some little shadowy clouds here like this. So I'll just enough to uh, give it some little extra just on the top of my brush there. Good. I might darken a little bit by adding a little bit of burnt sienna to my yellow. Don't need very much. Just a little tiny bit of burnt sienna added to that yellowy color. Just to darken it up a little tiny bit. I don't want to overdo it because it's too pretty as it is. 
just kind of give some definition to the to the sky. That's all. Perfect. Now we can put some little hills down here. I'm just going to um, use a small filbert, but you can use a small flat because the only reason I'm using a filbert is because it's handy. <laughs> and uh, but if you got a flat. A flat you may want to use but I like the fact that this has a bit of a round top on it and it can help me make some nice um, hills so I'm going to make some background hills and there's going to be they're going to be fairly light so we're going to take some let me see let me see I'm going to take I'm just going to take a bit of burnt sienna I got a messy palette my palettes are always messy I don't mind that as long as I know where the colors go and what colors I want to use so I'm just going to kind of burnt sienna and green and a little bit of red mixed in with that that's fine and some white to really lighten it up this will be my background hills okay i want them light so that um so they look far away so we'll just make some hills we will go we gotta make the background ones big enough so we can put some in the front so we'll just make some hills like this small one small one a little bigger a little higher, a little, and we'll darken it up so you can see it. I don't mind them being that light, but I want you to be able to see them too. I'm just going to fill that in. Okay, so that's a bit too light, dark. I'm going to clean that up, clean up my brush. I had too much paint on my brush. There we go, that's better. So I want them nice and light. Well, I tell you, the blending is amazing. It's amazing. I can't say it enough. You are going to be so happy. I don't think you're going to be able to paint without it after this. Very addictive. Painting is addictive as enough as it is. Now we got something else that's going to make us even more addictive. So we got that now, and I'm going to say that the light, if there's going to be some light coming in through here, probably here. And so there's going to be light. So I'm going to add a little bit of white, and I'm going to add a little bit of white to this edge here just to give it a, a mountain shape. See how it shapes up the mountain when you do that? See? I don't want to put too much on right now. We can always add some more after. Now, what we want to do is put the darker ones on the bottom. So I'm going to add green. I'm going to get my green and my burnt sienna. And I'm going to use that color for my other mountains underneath what I got done. So they will be smaller. So just go up like this. These are just hills in the front. There we go. They'll make sense now when we take the, the tape off, okay? Just get the shapes that you want. Make some smaller and some taller. Okay? So you can make these a little bigger. Might bring that over here. So you can change the shapes. Don't worry. There we go. So just put on a bunch at first and then you can shape them up after because it helps get your shapes better. And then we're going to take some yellow or some white, I'm sorry. Let me see, maybe yellow. Um, yeah, maybe some yellow. Let's take some yellow and add that to the edge here. As you can see, I'll make it up as I go along. <laughs> sort of make up the colors as I go along, but you can pre-plan your colors, you don't have to because uh, you certainly want to make sure the colors match and make sure if you're doing distant hills that they're not black or you know what I mean, like you still need to do some kind of planning 
you have to plan where the light is coming in, things like that, you know. So light is coming in through the center here, somewhere around here, and it's going to come out. And the bottom of the sky is pretty light, so. So make your brush really, really clean. Make sure there's nothing on it, because you want pure white. We want to make a, put some sun, let's put it here, I think it would be nice, because you don't want dead center, because then you lose the interest. So pick up some white. And you probably got some, and a little bit of yellow, don't matter. And just brighten up that little area here, because that's where the sun is coming in here. We'll just add a little bit of light there, and a little bit of light here. All right. I will come back to that, because I want to see. I want to, I want to see what I want to do with it, you know. I don't want to do too much with it yet till. Because some things are better left until last. Because if you do it too fast, you might not like it, and then you've got to do a lot of work. All right. Good. So we'll take our tape off. Now, that's pretty so far. So down here we're going to have a little... We we'll have water and a little beach. So I'm just going to take my magic white again because I want to have lots be able to blend. I'm just taking my blending, my magic white. And I'm going to put that down here. Magic white first. I mean, that's still wet up there. You could still work. On that up there. So you don't have to worry anymore about rushing to get your painting done or to get your paint on there or whatever. No more. We have a solution. Finally. After all these years, people were struggling and struggling to blend. And there was no need for it. <laughs> there was no need. This is something like the technique that Bob Ross uses, if you're familiar with Bob Ross. He uses called Wet on Wet. This is what we're working. We're working with Wet on Wet and he uses Magic White and he puts it on before he starts painting, but he uses oil paints. So he uses his Magic White for oils. We're using Magic White for acrylics and it does the same thing. It helps your paints blend beautifully and you have lots more time to work. All right. It looks great. So let's get our orangey color again. A bit of red. A bit of red. And some yellow. Because we want to match the sky. And because the hills are in the way, you won't need to worry about the blues and that. And, or <clears throat> because the beach is going to be up here. So, But anyway, just get your orange color. And we will use that. And we'll add a little bit of burnt sienna. Give it a nice thick. And I didn't even clean my brush because I still got magic white on, so that's fine. So underneath here we have, so let's get under here. So you're using a flat chiseled edge brush, so you should be able to get that line pretty straight. Should be able to fill that in pretty good. Okay. We're going to be darkening that up a little bit because we have shadows from the uh, from the hills. Okay, so we got that. And we'll come down to about that far for now. And then we're going to get some burnt sienna. Actually, do the burnt sienna after. So come down here, pick up some yellow and some white. Just got my yellow and white. I haven't got it all mixed together, but that's okay. Because I want to um, see how see where it blends so well. You don't have to worry about it too much. Before you would have to worry. So we want to brighten that up a little bit. There we go. 
So get a little bit of green in your pen. Don't worry about none of that because all the reflections are going to be there. All right, but I do want to brighten it up a little bit more. So add more white. I'm just going to come all the way down. That'll make it easier for you to uh, figure things out after. So just go ahead and pull it all the way down and get some more white. Brighten it up here. That is blending so well I could do this all day. I mean, it's, uh, I can't wait for you to try it. I hope you already tried it because you've probably seen my other video on how to make this. How to make your magic white. And once you start using, because in my other video I didn't, I did some paintings that you could follow along with. I did four actually with the magic white for smaller paintings. I just picked up some burnt sienna it's that going to time. Be some shadows down here. So we have some nice shadows. Pretty. And add a little bit of green to that just to give it that same kind of reflection. Okay. Still use your burnt sienna, that's okay. Just wanted to give it a little bit of a hint of green just so that... So you wouldn't be able to do this if you never had the magic white on. You'd have a really difficult time going over it with different colors. You probably already know it because we've all been struggling with blending with acrylics for a long, long time. And now, and now that's all over. This is perfect. Perfect. Now I might want to come down a little bit more. A bit of green, a bit of burnt sienna. I'll just put it on the corner of my brush so I won't have too much. Just a little bit down here. Just going to go back over. See, and you don't have to be afraid, you know, like, oh no, I'm going to ruin my painting. Because if you were doing this without the magic, this, your under painting probably would have been dry by now and you would have been covering up everything. But right now it's just blending. So beautiful. Look. Look, you don't even have to worry about it. It's amazing. I can't get over it. Magic. I'm going now, to put some white on the tip of my flat brush, like that. And I'm going to pick a spot for my water, some waves coming in, okay? So I'm going to probably just put a squiggly line, squiggly up and down and up and down, because it's a wave, so it's moving in pretty. Now, if you can't see that, we'll add more. Good. Might add a little more dark color over here. A dark orange. I think I'll add a little more of that over here just to darken up that area a little bit here. See? Look, see how you can blend it though? Look. <laughs> oh my, it's amazing. Put on some more. So now you can actually put on more colors without having to. Be afraid that you're going to ruin the one you already Just have. Take a little on. burnt sienna, a little bit on your brush. Burnt sienna. And um, let's put some shadow behind here just to. so we can bring out that wave there. A little more. may need to use a smaller brush. I'm, I'm using a fairly big brush, but that's okay. I'll just blend. I will just blend it. No problem. See? Okay, see that? No problem. Now, I hope you're as amazed as I am. So we have some more, we have a, um, maybe a, a rock, a nice big old rock right here. So let's take some dark brown. So we will add a little bit of black 
to our burnt sienna. See, I don't mix very much, do I? I'm kind of just like to throw the paint down there and let it mix on the canvas. So I'm just going to make, I'm going to squiggle around my brush, my flat brush, and just put on, okay. There we go. See how nice that see how nice it just spreads. And now you have a big old rock there, which is nice. Good. Very good. So you can see I'm using the same brush again. So I mean the whole painting has been done with you know one brush, one or two brushes. You don't need a big load of brushes. So we're going to add some more water coming up on the beach here. So we can do it this. I'm going to show you two ways that you could do those, the water coming in. So we could do it with uh, the burnt sienna first. Just using your chiseled edge, make a couple, miss a few little spots here. All right, maybe a little bit over here. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's a little bit coming over here. All right, I'm not gonna put too much there. That's just some water coming in, I'll show you now. And then you clean your brush really good. Clean it off with tap at the bottom of your jug. Of water so that you got no paint left on it and then you're going to get your white on the tip of your brush you can also use a fan brush for this but right now I'm going to use this and I'm going to go underneath that shadow that I made with white a red and yellow and burnt sienna, okay? Red and yellow and burnt sienna. Gives you that really nice orangey color. See, red, yellow. And burnt sienna. That gives you a really nice orange, dark, sort of dark orangey color. So we can put that down here just to just to add some depth. And we can do that because we can blend it really nice. So I'll be fixing that water there now for you in a minute. So, all right, we'll do that after. So we just want to clean up these rocks a bit. So get some burnt sienna and white and what you're going to do is highlight that rock. So just highlight it here on the edge and we will highlight it here in the front. We'll highlight it nice and bright here in the front. Okay, so we'll give it more white. Just the edge there, that will help you establish the shape of your rock. So I'll just add just white this time on your dirty brush. This will help you shape up your rock. getting some shape there and I'm going to go into black to darken up the back here and then I'm going to add some burnt sienna so it won't be too black okay so I'm just putting some black spots on here 
And then I'm going to get some burnt sienna. Really like this burnt sienna, it's really nice. Good. Let's move this out a little bit here. Come back here. Just trying to establish some colors and see what I want to do. I'm going to move that over here a little bit. Just moving it around. If you have a hard time, just let me know and I'll see if I can find an easier way for you. But because you have that magic white on, I, that's why I can do all these, all these shadows. Adding a little more black to this edge here. That's why I can do this because it's all blending really well. And because it's blending, it's giving me a really nice soft blend on the edge. I'm getting soft edges. It's like a miracle <laughs> when it comes to acrylics because they're so hard to work with and blend. I mean, this is this is amazing. Maybe that's why Bob Ross had you know found it so easy to paint because he had that magic white and he could just do anything. Darken up that edge there. That's a nice rock. I like that. And a little bit of a dark color down here just to so I can get my shadows and get my shadows in there. Good. Well as you can see this is a lot of this is done with uh, just one brush. So I'm going to pick up some white pure white and I'm going to make some more clean up that water here more white just I'm using a very chiseled edge of my brush to bring in that water look there we go and I might add a little more burnt sienna shadows here just a little bit not much, just a little bit here, maybe. Not much, because I don't want to uh, overdo it. I'll just put some white around the area where I did that. There we go. white. Just using to the very chiseled edge of my brush with my white, okay? Very chiseled edge. Now I'm going to brighten up that light here. And I'll probably do that throughout the painting as it dries a little bit because it's going to take a while to dry because of the blend of the magic white and um, just watch how beautiful this is going to blend now. Just put on some white in the corner of your brush. Come on down to the edge of the wave there. And it's giving you such beautiful smooth edges. That's what I like about it. Just There's no rough patches. It's all smooth. You don't even need to use that big fluffy brush. That's why you use that big fluffy brush in, uh, in some of the, the videos because they can't get the paint to smooth it out, right? Because they're not using not using the magic white. So this, my darlings, is going to be your all-time favorite. See look how look. Gorgeous. I can't get over it. This is my first uh, the reason I'm so excited is because this is the very first time. I've used magic white on um, any of my paintings. I always just use water. I mist them to keep them wet or add more paint or you know just keep going back and forth. Never could really get a good blend. I mean I, I did get good blends because I used a ton of paint and I used spraying it water all the time and you know so now I don't have to worry about that anymore. Never again. 
So I'm just going to add some more white. Nice and smooth, that is. Very, very nice. Now, we're going to add a couple little palm trees to that. I think that'd be pretty because it, where the background's so light, the palm trees will be dark and they will make it look even brighter. So for the palm trees, you're going to take a same brush because it's chiseled edge. So, I mean, you can do a lot of things with this brush. You're going to take some green and a bit of black and even a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, mostly green. Nice. All right. So, and get your chiseled edge on both sides of paint. And we will let's put the palm tree back here somewhere. We'll come up, plan it out. We'll come up and over out here okay so I'm going to stop probably right there and I'm going to start right here all right so make your marks and on your mark get set go come up over the mountain use your chiseled edge you remember how I used to tell you to you know, make a long tree branch like that. And we used to have to go back and over it several times because we couldn't get the paint to stick. Well, now that problem is solved. See, I could go all the way up there without even having to lift my brush. Now, another one I think would be over here. Be nice. Come right out. Come out and straight up. Okay. Out and straight up. Okay, so let's go out. Come off the corner and come out and out, 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 and up. And remember my other video where I told you not to have two trees the same height? Let's see, we got one small and one big. All right, looking good so far. I'm going to take a liner brush this time because we're going to make some nice. We're going to use the same color green with black and burnt sienna. All right, nice dark, dark green. And we're going to start in the center. We'll have a little dot there. And then we're going to take off a line here and a line here and a line here and a line here. And, and let's see, let's see, another one here, and another one here, maybe another one here. All right, good. And let's do the other one while we got our paint out and our liner brush. So maybe we'll start a little dot here, and then we'll come out. And we will come out and out. Some can be bigger than others. And out, because I'm left-handed, I'm going to pull in this way. <laughs> and down. And down. It should be enough. And they all come from center, okay? All those lines starting from the very center. Because if you go all over the place, they're going to look funny. So when I put the, uh, the palms on those now, they're going to look nice, okay? So you can use a fan brush for this, or you can use a flat brush. I'm going to try a fan brush. All right. So I'm going to use the same color. Black and green and burnt sienna. Black and green and burnt sienna. See how dark it is? I really want it dark, see? I want a really dark green because I'm going to put a few little highlights on it after. So start in the, on, on the line, start on the line and then pull out. Pull out your leaves. 
and follow the line. That's how you get that nice curve, okay? And then if you do underneath, that will thicken it right up. Come out from the line. Come out, out and away, 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 away. See how the fan brush gives you a really nice, those nice edges there? So I, I would suggest a fan brush if you could. You might have to practice a bit, but it's worth it. Pull off the line. Don't go away from the line, okay? But you're pulling off the line. Pull, pull, pull and lift. Pull and lift. Pull and lift. Pull down. Pull down. Pull away. Pull away. Good. Hey, see? That's how we do them all. So you take every line and you pull, touch the top of the line and pull away, pull away, pull. Well, follow the line, don't go off the line. Follow the line and pull away, pull away. Good. And then go inside and pull off the line, pull away. Good. See that? Isn't that pretty? So practice those because they're worth practicing. Go on the line, pull away. They get really thick. There's a little one in here. Some more. On the line and pull away. We'll have to work on that. I'm almost blocking off the sun there now, but that's okay because I think it looked nice peeping through there. But be careful of that. If you end up going over by accident, then just move your sun over here. I know it's in the middle, but or you can even move it over here, or you can move it over here, so where we can find a spot. But if you can avoid um, covering it up, that would be great. I'm just pulling away and I'm following the line. I'm not going off the line. I'm going underneath the line, see? That's a beautiful, beautiful palm tree. Wow. And this one's the same thing. So pick a line and go and follow that line, just pulling away. Your fan brush will give you those really nice, that's where you're getting those beautiful ends. That's from your, from your fan brush. And your fan brush, when you lift it off, your fan brush will leave those strokes. Your fan brush will do all the work for you, okay? Practice first on a piece of paper or something because if you've got a beautiful painting done like this and then you, you have a really hard time with your palms, then you're going to ruin your whole painting. So, and you can't fix it really because you got all your background there too, right? So, um, I would say practice first. Now, I'm using a bristol. This is a bristle, okay, a bristle fan brush. The softer ones are nice, but they don't, I don't think they give us a nice, uh, as much of a nice end to it, those edges. Okay, good. Getting there on this one. So you pull them out, but you follow the line. So all you gotta do is move away from the line. Oops. I'm going over it again so I can make it a bit bigger. Good. Those lines are there for a guide, so you can make them bigger or smaller. Well, bigger. Be hard to make them smaller, but you don't have to extend them if you like them. If you like them small like that. Now. Nice. 
Let me fill that bit in here. Good. Now, Maybe we could add a few little, I don't know, probably a few little birds in the sky. So if you dare to, if you dare to, put your liner brush, go into black. Here we go. We're going to ruin it. We're going to ruin it. I'm just going to put a couple of little. You don't have to do this, but um, I like to give it a try. Your liner brush, make the letter V. Good. So it's a few birds flo flying in the sky close to each other. Somewhere in the distance, over here. the letter V and if you want to on your brush you want to make a couple little sailboats. Right Starts off thin and comes down like this. There we go. I'm going to get the top of it a little thinner than that. There we go. And on the bottom, we got a bit of burnt sienna. Just for the bottom part. And we are going to put a little, just get your flat brush and we'll clean up that edge there. And we can do that because of the magic white, see? You're going to be able to do a lot more now. A lot more. So I'm going to put a little bit of white coming down off of that. To give it the highlight, the um, reflection. So just get a little palette knife, or you can use a flat brush, whatever is easier. And I'm just going to put a bit of white on the edge here. And there we go. Cool. Let me put a couple more here. Don't need very many. Just move your palette knife around so that you can get that very edge and get that paint to come off of there, okay? Alright. I think that's it. So we got a couple of birds. We got a couple. Uh, we got my nice son. We got a little... Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it's nice because we have the boat over a little bit and we have the sun over here. We have a small tree and a big tree and we got all kinds of stuff going on there and we got it done really nice so that... Uh, so that everything evens out nicely, a nice composition. It's a really nice composition. So you should learn a lot from this one. Use your magic white and you can do anything. So yes, so this is the painting we did with our magic white. And as you can see, you can blend everything. Everything blends beautifully. You don't have to worry about anything. You can create beautiful paintings with the magic white. And it's just so easy to work with. So you guys go ahead and try this painting. I really hope you do and I really hope you use the magic white. I just want to, I want your feedback. I want to know what you think. And I think this is really going to change the way that you paint with acrylics.